All right, guys. Welcome back. EYL Hometown Heroes Edition Chicago. Shot Town. What's going yeah. on now? Yes, shout, shout out to the Shot. Shout out to the West Side, to the South Side, North Side, East Side, every side. <laughs> we was at it in the South right now. <laughs> yeah, we in the South Side right now, for sure. Again, for sure. again. For sure. What area are we at specifically? So this, we in Washington Park. Washington Park. Shout out to Washington Park. For Those sure. in the know, y'all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got we got a very special edition um, today. But before we start, uh, we got some housekeeping items we want to make you guys aware of. Uh, it's not too late to register for our workshop, our first ever workshop um, on ten seventeen. So as we said before, every single month we're going to be having a workshop in person, but also live stream for anybody anywhere in the world. And there's going to be a different EYL guest is going to speak about their area of expertise. So the first one is with our guy, MG, the mortgage guy. Shout and it's going to be about financing your first real estate deal, real estate financing for your first deal. So you go to our website, earnyourleisure.com on the events tab, and you can register. As I said, you can do um, in person in New York City, but you can also live stream it and you can watch it. You don't have to actually watch it while it's going on with the live stream. Like once you have it, you can watch it whenever, whenever you, so if you're at work or whenever. So make sure you do that. So yes. All right. So now we have a very special episode. I'm actually interested because yeah. this is something that I don't know anything about. Zero. To be honest, but <laughs> Zero. I'm going to educate myself on this. So yeah. Byron and Shanice, um, dynamic duel, dynamic couple that also are business partners as well. So <clears throat> congratulations, first and foremost. Gratitude. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, so you guys, um, all right, you're in the mobile home industry, right? So for anybody that's not familiar with that, that is home on wheels pretty much, right? It's interesting because um, I met you at the event, our networking event, which was amazing, by the way. And, um, and well, I was- Thanks for coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank y'all for having me. <laughs> and and you, was, you was telling me about it. And um, you know, I, I was thinking like, this is just an interesting thing. Because we talk about real estate a lot, mm -hmm. but we've never spoken or covered um, mobile homes. And you was actually educating me because a lot of people, especially where we're from in the Northeast, we have a uh, derogatory, which I learned was a derogatory <laughs> we, we name. We shall not say. <laughs> yeah. Which is, well, well it's, it, it's, we used to call it trailer, a trailer home or mm -hmm. in trailer park, but it's not called, it shouldn't be called trailer park or, yeah. or trailer home. It's a mobile home in a mobile park. Mm -hmm. But long story short, you can actually invest in these properties mm -hmm. and you, it's just like real estate. You can make money. Um, you can wholesale, you can flip, you can fix up. And it's really interesting. It's a lot less as far as how much money you have to put into it. Yeah. A lot of it's a lot kind of easier um, finance and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. Before we even get into the details, can you tell your story of how you got into the industry? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. So man, so basically, I've been trying to do real estate for man four or five years, right? And when I tell you like capital, credit, I was having a lot of issues with that. And so man. March 3rd of 2017, that was the day I was fired from work. It's a great day. Yeah, great day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, that's my birthday. What kind of job What kind of job did you have? So I was in the transportation industry. I was a driver manager. Okay. And uh, so, man, for that time, I'm like, man, how am I still getting real estate? So, man, I was actually in, I was in a life coaching program at that time to become a life coach. Mm -hmm. So I will say that helped me up for to be where I'm at now. And that's something I hustled, hustled. Like I'm, I'm just trying to get into it. And I, at the time, man, I was driving Lyft to pay the bills, and I was always listening to podcasts. And this particular day, um, I happened to find a podcast. It was on mobile homes. But mind you, I'm driving, and people were like, man, turn that off, man. I ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. So I sent oh, it to damn. her. <laughs> I sent it to Sharnice, like, hey, take a listen to this, man. I, I think this is going to be special. Send it to her, and then... Yeah, so he sent me that podcast, and that podcast was on mobile homes. And I always tell Byron, the biggest thing that I learned from that podcast has so happens to be on mobile home investing, like he said. And the biggest thing that I learned from that podcast was you can literally get started with very minimal capital. Credit does not have to be good. And those are the two things that I feel like at the time, because me and Byron were new investors, those were the things that were kind of holding us back. So once I heard that, I was like, okay, we need to get into this niche of mobile homes. So I came home, I told Byron, like, look, we about to get into these mobile homes. Like, I know we trying to get these three flats right now here in Chicago. Um, we were trying to get buildings at the time, but like I said, our capital, our credit was not so good. So I was like, look, let's try something different. Let's go outside the box and let's conquer this. And man, it's been history ever since. Oh, that, that's that's amazing. I mean, especially as a couple doing it, yeah. um, y'all supporting each other, which we don't see it like this is the first couple that we've seen mm -hmm. on our podcast. 
Um, what did it take to have a belief in each other? Did y'all always trust each other? Like, how did that develop? Man, dope question. So the biggest thing for myself going through that journey, I learned a lot. I took a lot of L's, went broke, cre- messed up my credit, car repo, like all the worst, right? And so she had my back. She was the one person that I, out of everything from family, friends that had my back. So it was like, yo, with this knowledge, like, I got, I have nothing but trust and I'm going to have so much patience mm. in this. Mm. And she trusted me and I was just see her growth and she just dug and became a student literally with no entrepreneur experience at all. And I'm just looking like, yo, she a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So, okay. So, you um, you, you listen to the podcast. You sent it to her. What made you say, okay, this is something that we... Because I, I, you both had lost your jobs, right? Yeah. So, what made you say, okay, this is something that we're going to do full-time? And what was your first deal? Like, what was the first thing that got you into, like, buying your first mobile home? Man, so... Honestly, I had nothing else to lose. Like I had took so many L's. I'm like, yo, this gotta work. One of these gonna work. <laughs> so again, common theme. Right? <laughs> so you know, we got the scavenging man. I, um, we took out a high interest loan for 10k, mm-hmm. right? I, I mean, and uh, listen, the interest rate on that was 24. percent Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Was like wow. Cre- like credit card? No, no, a loan like a, a loan. yeah, I call oh. them shark loans. Oh, okay. Almost like a payday <laughs> loan. <laughs> Wait, you, y'all went through like a credit union or something like that. Uh, lending club. Okay. Lending yeah. club. And uh, so we got that, and then we just dove in. We start hitting the road. We had did a little education, but we didn't know. Like we literally learned from the school of hard knocks. Mm-hmm. Um, so we hit the road. We went all the way down to Cincinnati looking for homes. We didn't know we were trying yeah. to see we were gonna move homes. And uh, man, our first deal, um, uh, she actually found this guy, um, and up in it's called Love's Park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I ended up, again, prospecting um, via Facebook. I found this guy. He was a park manager. He had a lot of older homes, and he was like, look, we got some homes under 5000 You should come out and take a look. That was definitely our budget because starting out, we was like, we only want to stay under 5000 <laughs> So went out there. We looked at a few homes. We ended up getting two. Uh, one home, we paid 3700 It was move-in ready, so we didn't have to do anything to it, no rehab. It was beautiful. And the second home, we purchased for 500 We put a little bit of rehab into it, about $3,200. We ended up flipping those first because, of course, we wanted to go ahead and make some profit so we can continue to invest. So we ended up flipping those. We made 19500 in less than 30 days. And then you said, this is, this this is it. This yeah, that's it. Right. And that was it. Right. That was it. Yeah. So at, at that time, you were saying, like, that was already half of the, your, your yearly salary, right? Yeah. So at the time, at that time, prior to me getting fired, I worked at the uh, gas company here in Chicago. And my salary gross, I was making about, like, thirty nine. So you thinking about, I made about close to 20000 in less than 30 days. That was, like... That was eye opening for me. Not by gas. That's powerful because a lot of times people um, are afraid to leave their job. I posted yeah. something the other day like, don't let, uh, well, a, f- a fear of losing 50000 a year could stop you from making 50000 a month. Mm-hmm. And you could break that down to anything, but yeah. like your situation is like, let's, you, you actually was blessed to get fired or lose yeah. your job however you lost it because it's like, let's say that you might have stayed in that job making 30, 39000 mm-hmm. and it's like a lot of times people are like scared to leave mm-hmm. and you would have never even knew that you could possibly make 20000 a month, yeah, and then five years from now, you could be making a hundred thousand a month, like you know what exactly. I mean. So it's, exactly. it's crazy, but yeah, um, I like that you guys <clears throat> supported each other mm-hmm. and took the leap of faith because that's extremely important, especially in a relationship. It's yeah. like mm-hmm. you know, you could you tell your partner you lost your job, and it's like you better get another one, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah. What, what made you have faith in him? And even like, okay, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to support you on being an entrepreneur. You guys are entrepreneurs. Like, I'm going to support you on being an entrepreneur. Like, with no business background, it's not like you guys were entrepreneurs before that. Like, what made right. you have faith? Because you, he said you were the only person that really, like, really had faith. So what made you have that faith? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, prior to, you know, Byron's entrepreneurial journey, like, you know, we were already, I guess, quote unquote, talking and dating before we got serious. And at that time, like he said, he had a good job. You know what I'm saying? So once we got back linked up, at that point, he was going through his hardships or whatever. But by that time, we had already built our friendship. We was already best friends. So it's like, as a best friend, why would I turn my back on him? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was I was there for him through all the hard situations that he went through in his life. And then I feel like he was also there for me because at the time, I had just lost my job. I was very stressed out. 
he was there picking me off the floor, telling me every day, like, Shar, come on, like, we about to do this together. Like, I'm thinking about us now, our legacy, generational wealth. Like, he was feeding that into me every single day. It's like I had no choice but to rock with it. Like, you don't get that every day, especially from a partner, from a relationship. Like, that's powerful. Good man. Yeah. <laughs> she, she got me up here. Yeah. 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 Oh, cry man. Right. Don't you cry. It's right. like a, it's like a lifetime movie. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now that's beautiful. I mean, yeah. I, I obviously, you know, I'm a married man, so like, yeah. I can relate to everything that you're saying. Like yeah. having somebody that knows that whatever we're gonna, mm-hmm. whatever I do is for us, right? Yeah. So like, we are one. So like, mm-hmm. the decisions that I make or she makes. It's for the betterment of us and mm-hmm. our family, right? That yeah. legacy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's powerful. Shout yeah. out to y'all. Appreciate right. you, bro. Black love. Black love. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, I don't think people fully understand, like I said, especially like we, we come from New York. And, mm-hmm. um, but you actually told me that there's a lot of mobile homes in New York, yeah. but like yeah. the New York City area, metropolitan area, and, um, you know, a lot of listeners that may be from like cities, they don't fully understand how big of an industry mobile. Um, parks home, homes are mm-hmm. so I did some research so it's 22 million Americans live in mobile homes mm-hmm. um, and so like how lucrative is it like on an ROI standpoint how lucrative <laughs> is the mobile home industry man well, listen it's the <laughs> highest cash on cash return of any real estate investing like I didn't believe it at first until I'm gonna give you an example our average returns are 250% ROI on per deal that we do how long does it does Six, our normal turnaround is 60 days we know now we're to the point that we flip a house we flip it in less than 15 days wow okay so all right so since you said that can you can, 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 can you uh, can you can you break down a deal and like kind of explain like how does that work cool so I'm gonna break down with a deal so we had a deal uh, we purchased a home for three thousand mm-hmm. dollars right in Indiana and the home that it didn't need any work from an older lady, in most of the situations, right? Most people don't really know the value of their homes. Mm-hmm. And three grand said, cool. So what we did was we said, you know what? We're gonna open up for seller finance. We're gonna help somebody get affordable housing. In that area, the average rent, we normally base it off the average rent, it was $800, right? So we said, okay, we're gonna be comparable. Now, in a park, if you're doing mobile home investing in a park, the park has lot rents, just like HOA fees, okay? So you have to pay monthly those. This park was, that was at 372. So, it, all right. A lot fee. What, what's the lot fee? So it's like an HOA fee. They're paying for the trash. They're paying for uh, the like water. Just to stay, to stay yeah. on the actual. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So the, the park owns the land. The land. Right. Yeah. And so you own the actual. You, you can't just park your, right. your, okay. your mobile home anywhere. No. no. It has to be inside of a, a <laughs> license, like a park that has a permit and it's mm-hmm. owned. It's like a. Okay. Right. And so normally like the ones that like, you drive, like the RVs, those are different, right? You yeah. go, you can go take drive those and go into a park and pay like a fee. But normally the ones that you see are kind of just like on actual like land, like those right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can move those, but it's not costly. Mm-hmm. Um, normally about two, two grand or so to move them, depending mm-hmm. on how many miles. Okay. But in this case, uh, so we, so we say, Hey, you know, we'll take 428 monthly. Okay. Um, so it was 800 bucks. So how it did, we put them on a 60-month term. Because remember, it's a mobile home is pretty much a motor vehicle in most states. It is not actually real estate. It's real property, mm-hmm. unless you're putting it on, on land. So this particular deal, we're getting 800 a month. We're getting cash flowing, 428. We put them on a 60-month term. At the end of that 60-month term, that 3,000, we turned to 25,000. Mm-hmm. Was, 20, was it 25,620? Mm-hmm. So that's 700% return on investment we created. So you the the rent that you guys were collecting was four hundred a month four twenty eight yeah. and you how much did you buy it for three thousand how how do you buy something for three thousand <laughs> and charge how much were they they were paying eight hundred dollars a month in rent yes because how is that how is that possible so with that we we so instead of them renting an apartment right because they they get if they rent an apartment for eight hundred dollars they not they got no equity in it mm-hmm. so what we're providing is just equity in that house right the thing is we buy it for so low right we don't necessarily have to say okay we're going to only sell it for five thousand right we still operate because if you think about the the number it's still a house it's still a home for them so a 20 at the end of the day a twenty five thousand dollar house where are you still going to get a move-in ready twenty five thousand dollar house so you know that's crazy but i was just <laughs> like but if why would somebody not just buy it on their own if they like why would you rent for 800 if it only cost three hundred three thousand to buy yeah so the thing is for us being investors it's almost like we buy off off market property mm-hmm. right the most people don't really know that 
hey, I can go get that. And they, if they do, they definitely take advantage, yeah. right? For example, we have a house Sharnice just sold this week. Um, mm-hmm. We literally we got the house for four fifteen hundred. We sold it to him for six thousand. He's gonna mm-hmm. move to home, right? We still doing a favor, but then at the same time, when we offer seller finance, we just offer. I usually I usually do anywhere from like eighteen dollars. I look at eighteen dollars to twenty five dollars per square foot. So you could actually with your your financing, you could have no money and get a home. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. So I can, <laughs> right? So like I go in, I have no money. I'm like, yo, I want to get this home. That's where you come in. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm offering because see, the thing is, most banks don't lend to mobile homes. Like they, like the, like Warren Buffett, he has two lending companies because he understands Warren Buffett is in this game. He owns Clayton Homes. Okay. Warren Buffett lends mobile homes. Yeah. Yes. So he owns Clayton Homes. That was an acquisition he bought in 1997. Clayton Homes is the largest like manufacture home company in the country. So banks don't give the loans because are they looking at it as an like an automobile loan? Like how are they looking at it? They looking at it as a depreciating asset. Yeah. Whereas okay. for us, we look at it as value. So it's a depreciating asset because it has wheels and anything that with wheels depreciates. Mm-hmm. Correct? Right. Yep. yep. So is that true? Not nice. <laughs> right. At the end of the day, for us, we look at it, it we solve an affordable housing crisis, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, cities, we know what? The cost of living is going up, mm-hmm. all right? Uh, wages are still staying the same. So people are getting pushed out. Like, we see it every day, like, where it's gentrification. People can't afford. So for us, it's like, hey, listen, I get it. You've been living in this apartment for the last five to six years. Why don't you get your own asset, right? Because at the end of this, you can do the same thing. Most people that we educate that buy houses from us, we even teach them like, hey, this is how you sell your home mm-hmm. to get your money back or make more on your, on your home. So, so where are these, these mobile parks located in proximity to major cities, right? So we, we live in the, the New York Tri-State. Mm-hmm. Um, how many miles typically would a mobile park be located, right? Yeah, good mm-hmm. question. So for you guys, I know you guys got one in Staten Island. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I told like you that. that. Like, I've been in, in New York. Uh, we've been in New York our whole lives. Like, I think I don't think I've ever been to Staten Island. Shout out to Wu Tang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and then we got a few students out in New York, and they normally work with parks in Jersey. Okay. So they go over to Jersey. Yeah, and, and about honestly, I, I would say about sixty miles. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're willing to go upstate New York. Um, I'm not sure the, the, the exact mileage, but I know you guys have a lot central and upstate New is, York. Is there like a mandated distance like that the like federal government will say like this is the furthest distance you can go before you create a park? So here's the thing. In modern days, so mobile home parks, the reason why you don't see a lot of them popping up right now, mm-hmm. because here's the reality, taxes, right? In, in America, it costs on average is like 12000 to send a kid to school. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you guys an example. I'm about to blow your mind real quick. Our taxes on our mobile homes per year? $160. Our taxes on our mobile homes in Indiana, $37. For the year? For the year. <laughs> so you got to think about it. If you have a wow. kid living, if you got children, you got two children, and it costs at least eleven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to send them to school, that city is not eating from that. So cities really don't really like mobile home parks because of the taxes-wise. And most mobile home parks, they use in the city water. They sit, they use in the city uh, sewer. So... And you know, in that case, it's like, yeah, we not eating off that. We don't really like right. this over here. That's so, how, so I'll be more on lunch money than that. I always, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's a question: You live in a mobile home, right? Mm-hmm. How do you? What is plumbing? How does that work? So I like. So everything is above ground. Everything is above ground. So the cool thing is, like, you know, if if you need something fixed, you they can go under the the actual mobile home to repair. So, but like your actual like, you go to the bathroom. It goes <laughs> underneath the like. Where does that go? Is it like a septic tank down there? Yeah, yeah. so normally most parks, okay. so here's the thing, most parks either have, they're hooked up to city sewer, so it, it will, they will have the hookup so it can go, you know, along with the city, or they have septic tanks. Got it. Okay. So like if it comes from your truck or your, your mobile home mm-hmm. into like a underground thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, all right. So so if, if, if the taxes are so low, right? So what's the, all right. What's the gig? Because it has to... Something's <laughs> up, right? Something's got to be up. He's yeah. like, what, what, what's going on so, here? So, all right. The taxes are, are, are low. You can buy a home for low. You can sell it for high. So why, A, why would any... Why, why did it, what's, why, what's in it for the city or for the town to actually house these places? And how come more people aren't um, doing it? Mm, good question. So... Um, I would say first, well, the first question I'm going to answer, you said, like, um, like why, do, why do cities, so most mobile home parks are grandfather in. A lot of them really popped up in, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, began because after the war, the government invested into mobile homes, right? Mm-hmm. After they were using uh, actually old war planes and using the tin, that's why most mobile homes are kind of like that, that aluminum. They end up had, they had a surplus of aluminum, so they're like, yo, how can we use this? Boom, we built a house. 
So that's why mobile homes actually really start going. So in the 70s, when, like I said, once HUD got involved in the 70s, that kind of de- depreciated, right? They, the value of mobile homes. Because at one point, mobile homes were the place to be. Like, yeah, you told me that. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, yeah. it used to be luxury. Yeah. yeah. And it was kind of like suburbia. Most mobile homes are in rural. It's like suburbia, right? Mm-hmm. If you go to a lot of mobile home parks, they look like little, uh, I guess you can say suburban neighborhoods. And once when HUD got involved, unfortunately, Think about uh, uh, the next generation. People start moving back to the city. Um, mm-hmm. It they just kind of took the value down. So it was a it was a need for affordable housing. But with cities, these places were definitely grandfathered in. It's a lot of cities that, for example, let's say an owner actually sells a mobile home park. Sometimes they be like, "Yo, that's inhabitable." We, like they don't because mm-hmm. they don't really want it because they don't really benefit from the mobile home park. So when did when did mobile homes get the bad name of like trailer parks and trailer mm-hmm. homes? Like when did that? shift because you said at at first it was luxury and then it obviously it kind of got tarnished and people have bad ideas when they think about that so like at what point did that even like you said like trailer park trash stuff like that like how did that happen so to my knowledge it was an article i'm not not sure the exact year but i think and i know it was like in the late 60s and somebody had wrote a newspaper article about trailer trash and that just kind of stuck. The name mm-hmm. just kind of stuck. And then, of course, movies play. I think about horror movies, right? Mm-hmm. Eight Mile. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm telling you, when y'all said mobile homes, the first thing I thought was Ozarks. Yeah. Was, yeah. Hey, yo, okay, it must be similar to that. Right, right. <laughs> and so the ones they show on television, or they depict, I look at, honestly, it's almost like in the hood, right? They, mm-hmm. they depict, like, you know, what they, for example, Chicago, they're going to depict on certain shows that is just the gutter, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, it's very nice mobile home. It's a luxury. People don't know it. In San Francisco, they have a mobile home park that literally million dollar mobile homes. The same double wide that I can go purchase for fifteen thousand is going for a million dollars in an area in San Francisco. Yeah, I saw Will Smith that had a mobile home. It was cost like two million. It was like a oh, yeah. two story mobile home. Yeah, <laughs> like he, t- yeah. he travels like to movie sets with it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's mm. dope. All right, so now we got the backstory. So now in the second segment, <laughs> we're gonna go into some details and go over terms and and key definitions. All right, so um, now we're going to go over some key terms, definitions, things of that nature. But before I start, um, we talked about pricing. But on average, since we're, we're in Illinois, how much can, does a mobile home cost on average? So the average price in Illinois, uh, used mobile home, is right at $7,500. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're looking for something new, like if you're getting a brand new home, they can start it right at about like uh, $35,000, $40,000. All right. Okay. And one of, one of the things, in the negative connotations that go with mobile homes is that they're not safe. So one of the questions I had was like, how safe are mobile homes? Man, I love that question. So, <laughs> so mobile homes are actually, since they're built in factories, they're wind tested. They're built to last, uh, outstand tornadoes and mm-hmm. uh, earthquakes and things like that, right? The thing is, unfortunately, like you've seen maybe CNN or so, they may show, they may show a mobile home park with like three Three tops, you know what I'm saying, right. gone. But yeah. it's not like, you know, back, I forget, what's the movie? I'm not, uh, I forget whatever it is. But anyway, with the houses flying all the way around and things like that, mm-hmm. no, it's not like that. They so, actually build safe. So what's the lifespan, right? So sometimes, like, you know, a traditional uh, brownstone might be built in 1909. What's the lifespan of a, of a mobile home? Good question. So uh, the older ones, anything that's built after 1990, up to 30 years. The new ones are built to last within uh, 45 to 55 years. Okay. Okay. So as far as you was explaining that um, title, right? And it's a, it's it's different from like when you buy a, a a home, like a regular home, and you have a, a deed. So can you explain that that process as far as like the, the title? It's a lot. It's just it's easy to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so as far as a mobile home, like a mobile home is considered a motor vehicle. So it's kind of like a car. So when you are selling the asset, you're just going down to the DMV or whatever your motor vehicle department is in your state, and you're just transferring that title. That's it? Yeah. How long does it take? About two weeks to come back. So the the closing, what's the typical closing from buying a home and having it up and running? Like, Yeah, so buy a home. Honestly, it's like a day. I mean, so you buying the home, you, of course, we're dealing with the park. So we're going to deal with the park manager. Our buyer has to sign some paperwork with the park. That's about 30 minutes to an hour. That's signing a lease for that lot rent that we talked about earlier. After that, we normally take our buyers. We go to the DMV together. We do that paperwork, transfer the title. That's about, again, a 15 minute process. And then they'll send a title back in the mail. That normally takes about two weeks. And then the new buyer will get the title. They'll own the asset now. And then we move on to the next deal. 
That was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, one of the things when I, we was doing some research, it was like, there's a difference between modular homes and mm -hmm. manufactured homes. What's mm -hmm. the biggest difference? So modular homes, more, more, more times you see uh, concrete base where so they have like, they are, they are more plotted on cement, right? Whereas a manufactured home is they're, they're literally sitting on cinder blocks. Mm. So that's what you see is called skirting. So you'll see like, uh, right, like uh, some vinyl that's like right around the bottom of that. So that's what covers that up. But the house is actually sitting on cinder blocks. So, all right. What about insurance? Like insurance for a mobile home. Is it different from insurance to a regular home? Is it car insurance? Is it actually a transportation vehicle? Like how does that work? Are we calling Geico? What are we doing? <laughs> like, what are we calling? Yeah, you literally can call Geico, though. <laughs> like, you literally, you're right. You literally can. So when it comes to mobile home insurance, it's very similar to what you would get for homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance. So you literally can call like Geico, State Farm, like your normal insurance companies and just let them know like you would like to get insurance on your mobile home. And the typical cost for that is about like $14, $15 a month. So kind of similar to what you would pay for renter's insurance. Wow. Yeah. That's so what's the process? Because you said like the park owns the land, right? But you mm -hmm. own the actual mobile home. Mm -hmm. What's the actual process to getting your mobile home into a park? All right, so, so that process, you'll be really looking for a mobile home park owner who, who's looking for houses. And right now, it's like a gold rush, right? Like literally now, out of the 44,000 mobile home parks, uh, four, well, sorry, 4,000 are institutionally owned, meaning like just corporations that own it. But it's really like the Wild West because they see the opportunity. Cap rates are crazy on these things. So for them, what's happening is you have literally call like bird, like bird dog watchers. They're going to other people's parks, right, from another owner. So let's say Rashad has this park, right? Mm -hmm. Now he hires me to come in Troy's park to, to scout out some of Troy's houses to take back to his park. <laughs> they're like recruiting. Dirty right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty game. <laughs> Man, trust me, bro. So like, like what's some of the incentives that a, um, a park or a, a lot owner would say live in this lot as opposed to live in that lot? So the one thing, the cool thing in the newer mobile home parks, what they're trying to really do is make it a community base. Because that's one thing about mobile home parks get a bad rap. Mm -hmm. It's a really good community because everybody knows each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, so like, for example, it may be, you know, the amenities in the park. We got parks that got swimming pools and basketball courts. And in, in the mobile home park? In the park? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. In the park. Yeah. It's like a whole kind like of, a, kind yeah, of exactly, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's really just the amenities. Like, what can this park provide, right? Like, like one park, we, I love it because they give beautification awards for whoever has the best lawn, right? Some parks are pretty much like a concrete jungle or on concrete, but a lot of parks are, I mean, have like huge backyards, gated mm -hmm. fences and garages. And like, you'll be surprised at seeing some of the way this stuff is developed. So, all right. So you, you have a mobile home. You, you put it in the lot. But now the lot has a backyard and all that. So you have to pay for that backyard. Is that part of just the lot fee? Like, how does mm -hmm. that work? Yep, that's part of your, your, your lot fee. I look, I equivalent to almost like taxes, mm -hmm. right? Because I know here in Chicago, depending on a single family home, you may be paying anywhere from three grand to six grand on your taxes, right? I look at it, that's the same as taxes. If you kind of, if you add that number, if you're paying 375 a, you know, a month, when you look at the yearly, it's, it's pretty much still in line with taxes and some people pay in their cities so in real estate you know when people have multiple units and multiple uh assets they have property managers in the mobile home game you have park managers mm -hmm. is it similar or what's the differences in, in those two roles so the park manager's role is really to oversee the park for example you know make sure they fill in houses um you know if somebody's not paying their lot rent make sure they send them their notices um, a lot of parks have staff, so they have ha other handymen on the park. But the cool thing about it is they're not really, uh, most parks don't, they do rentals, but they're not, let's just say, like fixing everything in the house, should you mm -hmm. say that. Okay. That's the, so, all right. So, there's two types of communities, right? There's mm -hmm. age restricted and family communities. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, can you explain that? Yeah. So, uh, all age community would be like, you know, 18 to really all ages. The restricted ones is the more, they're normally 55 and older. So, it's more so retirement communities. And you normally see those uh, like down south, Florida, West Coast, like Arizona, California, um, Las Vegas. Like, you'll see the more restricted communities in those areas. Okay. So, how many people, like, how many homes are in a typical community? So it varies. It could be anywhere from 30 upwards to 500 homes. It really just d depends on that particular part. 
and you said that they don't the park manager doesn't come around to collect rent right so what's the process when somebody doesn't pay is it the eviction process are the deadlines the same as state regulated or is it faster for mobile homes honestly from, from what we see parks don't play no games man. No. like i'm gonna say this like most parks that we deal with they give you 10 days okay you get a 10 day notice and then after that i mean you can definitely pay but um if you're past that 30 days they got paperwork already and they're starting yeah. that eviction process wow so all right um what's the maintenance on mobile homes is it Car maintenance? Is it house maintenance? Is it a combination of both? You have to change the oil? Like, what's the deal with that? My time is built, bro. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, literally, like regular house maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. The cool thing about a mobile home, all the materials are much cheaper than a traditional house, right? Brick and mortar. Because you're dealing with, um, most houses come with, you know, vinyl floors. They're coming mm -hmm. with, they say wall board instead of drywall. Um, so m most of your materials are, are cheaper. Um, so like maintenance, like I tell people, if you're doing a full rehab on a mobile home, let's say a, a, a full gut, 12 grand. So <laughs> speaking of that, um, <laughs> so yeah, I, you said fix, fix up. So I, I, I took some notes. It's vinyl, it's real rock, it's mm -hmm. um, foam installated, uh, cinder block. So mm -hmm. like, all right, you're, you're fixing up and you're, you're rebuilding a mobile home, right? Mm -hmm. How does that work? Like you get a contractor to do that and like how yeah, like what's the how do you do that? Like is it just like a regular home or so you can. Here's the thing. You can get a contractor, um, but it's a lot of peop a lot of mobile homes that use special contractors, right? They mm -hmm. just do mobile homes because a lot of the the ma well, the maintenance is a lot of times cheaper, um, and the materials are cheaper. Um, if I take somebody who has been doing all single family houses rehab, he comes to my mobile home. He's trust me, my price is gonna be a little bit higher because of what he's <laughs> used to, right? <laughs> um, but at the same time, we call him handyman. We got like a team of literally five guys, and when we need a rehab, we call them. They go ahead and do it. And the, and the biggest thing for us, like man, shout out to my guy uh, Packy Hood Estates. But just like we keep it clean, safe, and functional, that's our biggest thing. And that's his. We le actually learned that model from him: clean, safe, fu clean, safe, and functional. And long as that's our biggest thing, like we're not coming in there trying to do a bogus job because you have people, mobile homes don't have inspections really like that. Mm -hmm. you talk, can you talk about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really like, again, since it's a, it's a motor vehicle asset, <laughs> it's, it's not as strenuous as a house. Like you, mm -hmm. yeah, There's no appraisal process. Exactly. No, not at all. Exactly. And that's why for us, it's like, yo, we add this value because we're not going to let nobody come in and tell us like, no, wait, this is only worth four grand. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as like getting started right how much money do you need to get started in the mobile home real estate industry i mean really we always tell our students like little to no money it really just depends on your market and really just how you're prospecting um you can literally like for me and byron we don't really touch anything over five thousand. that's a strategy that we have created and stuck with but even in like the higher markets, like we always say, like you can wholesale mobile homes, like you can still literally go in and still we call it like being that helper in a situation and helping a family to sell their home. And then again, you going in with no money down. You're just now just marketing the home and then taking the profit off that and then still making sure that they get the amount that they're looking for. So so, so how does the wholesaling? Because I know wholesale. anybody's not familiar with wholesaling real mm -hmm. estate. It's yeah. like you're pretty much like the middleman. You never right. actually own the home, <laughs> right. but you can make a profit. It's like if Troy wants to buy a home and you want to it's way much sell home you want to buy a home mm -hmm. and then I can come in and be like the middle person and mm -hmm. then make like 10,000 or 15,000 and mm -hmm. I don't really do any work there's no there's no risk there's no money that I put up anything mm -hmm. is it the same process for, for mobile homes yes mm -hmm. exact same process um, you know you can put them on the contract and the reality of it right now in this market is really no competition Mm. That is why they're like we're in Illinois. We only like that we personally we know of ten other investors, but we've only met two, and the, <laughs> and, and out of those, and the newer ones are our, our students. Wow. So as you as you're talking, I'm digging myself right. Yeah, it's cool to get the mobile home, right? Mm -hmm. But you said that the person that owns the land is the one who makes the profit. How do I go about getting the land? <laughs> do I have to buy a lot and then get licensing to have mobile homes on it? Like, what's that process? So that's dope. So, for example, let's say we get a lot of people like, yo, I got like 30 acres down in Mississippi. Like, can I put homes on it? It's like, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, you can. You know, like, honestly, if it's your land, you yeah. Like, I mean, the biggest thing is 
um, let, for example, let's say you just got raw land, right? So yeah, now you're gonna have to get septic and you're gonna have to get the well system installed. Okay. On the high end, that can run you up to like twenty two thousand. On the low end, you get all that installed. I hope you stay under ten. That'd be perfect. But let's say twelve five, right? Yeah. Now moving the house, depending on where you're moving it from, um, a lot of char- a lot of moving companies start off right about that thousand range, as long as it's under a hundred miles, depending on what it is. But let's say on a high end, your move is uh, five thousand, right? You still you look let's say you all in thirty thousand right now you go get a house you want to get a brand new house now you all in let's say you got another forty thousand right you still under a hundred thousand dollars so you still under a hundred thousand dollars right and think about this now you can become the bank right you can either lease that land out forever or you can just either package that up and now sell the land in the house okay so um for for buying it do you buy it in uh an LLC or you just buy it like as a regular person? Like how, how do you do that? So when we started with buying in our personal, but now mm-hmm. we purchase all our homes in LLC. Why? Just from protection standpoint? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we go ahead and roll them in a trust. So why, can you talk about that, the trust? Yeah. And it's really just keeping your name off. Right? We don't want people to know how mm-hmm. many assets we have. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we just learned from a mentor that, hey, this is just an extra layer of protection for us. Small business, man. That's dope. <laughs> That's dope. You guys, I saw on your Instagram page, you said... Um, one property, you can get one property, I guess, like in the, in the area, well, somewhere, I don't know where in America, but you can get one property for $45,000 and that could generate an income of $800 a month, let's say. Mm-hmm. Well, you can get nine mobile homes for 45000 and that generates an income of $2,700 a month. Mm-hmm. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Profit margins. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I actually made that post. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> first lady. But, right, right, right. First Let's lady. Go, right, first lady in mobile homes. <laughs> no, but um, I definitely did that just to kind of show the margins as far as, you know, when we say like mobile homes is the highest cash on cash return on any form of real estate. So in that specific example, I kind of used the numbers that I got from one of my realtor friends who ended up purchasing a property for 45000 In that situation, she was a landlord. They were renting it out for 8000 So in that case again we always look at long term the 60 month terms because we normally put our um, tenant buyers on seller finance for 60 months so in that case if she's making in five years she made a little bit over 45,000 so kind of close to like 40 that 48,000 mark so she made her money back but I took that same number and I was like look let me compare that 45,000 to what you can do in the mobile home game so with 45000 in a mobile home game, again, if you're sticking at that $5,000 range that myself and Byron stick to, oh, nine houses. then, yeah, nine houses. Nine houses for 45000 right? Remember, we talked a little bit about earlier about that seller finance, putting our tenant buyers on payments. Now, if you're putting them on payments for a minimum of $300 a month, mind you, we're no landlords in this situation. So we have no landlord responsibility. We're playing the bank. So in that $300 a month for nine homes, you're looking at $2,700 a month, again, in cash flow. So you already tripling your cash flow profit. So now let's look at five years. How much you looking to make in five years? Over It's like over 160000 I can't remember. I think it's 162000 So you've tripled your initial investment investing in mobile homes. So then it's like when people always ask us, like, why do y'all stick to mobile homes? That's why. Byron? Good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> she knows our numbers. All right, man. Yeah, that was impressive. Whoa. That was impressive. So, so yeah, in the next segment, we're going to talk about education, and we're going to talk about scaling and a few other things in the last one. All right. So in the last segment, we're going to talk about education, scaling. But before I start, I want I just got a quick question. So, all right, there's three different like there's different ways how in like real traditional real estate, right? You like buy and hold mm-hmm. and um, make money off of cash flow, or you can you know flip properties, right? So um, I know right now your main focus is flipping, but is there is there um, profit in buying and holding and getting like um, cash flow from mobile homes as well? Oh man, definitely. For example, uh, man, I got to give a shout out to one of our students, Harold, but he's down in uh, Georgia, and he purchased a mobile home for fifteen hundred, put a thousand into it, and what he did was he saw opportunity with truckers. He understand a lot of guys stay extended stays, mm-hmm. so he rented out per room five hundred dollars per room of his mobile home. Right. Okay. So think about it. He got his money back in like three months. Mm. Now he's making all profit. He just created a thousand dollars cash flow. Well, I'll say this. He paid I think his lot runs like three seventy five. Mm-hmm. You know, right right around that right around that range. But at the same time, he's still bringing in close, you know, over six hundred bucks a, a month, just cash flow. So your your the the lot fee plus the whatever your charge for rent, that's what gives you the total rent price. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So what's your what's your what's your vision to scale? Like what's your what's your plans on scaling? Um 
for your for your personal uh, business brand. Mm-hmm. Man, so we definitely want mobile home parks. Mm-hmm. Um, so the larger goal with that is to get an acquisition where we find somebody who has a portfolio, 10, 20 mobile home parks that's looking kind of just to retire, right? Um, and just pretty much purchase that portfolio and just build from there and really open up the floodgates for more people to invest in mobile homes. Is, How- that, just, is that just something like just being in an industry you'll know? Or is there like a database where you can see like these people own this amount of mobile parts. Right. So we've been doing our homework. We got the top <laughs> 100 companies um, that, that do it. Literally, to be in the top 100, if you own over 15 mobile home parks, you are in the top 100 of the companies. How, how, how much does it cost for a mobile home park? So now the prices went up. Um, I would say on an average for 50 pads plus, you're looking at about like 1.2, depending on the region, 1.2 mil, 2 million. Uh, really depends on the region, right? I've seen parks for that has a hundred pads that was going for one point two mil. Pad is just the area that's designated for the exactly. For the how, how much revenue can that bring in on a year? Wow. So man, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. So for example, um, I look at it if you have, let's say you have two hundred pads, right? And then you get getting a you getting four hundred bucks. Uh, per pad. Normally, most uh, for a park to be occupied, fully occupied, you're looking at a good park, 95 percent, right? 95 percent of those houses are filled. So if you look at your cash flow, I might pull out the calculator real quick. <laughs> Troy, I heard you dope with numbers, man. <laughs> Same, I'll, I'll run them in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm trying to think, uh, but the cash flow, I, I, I know I had some, um, some parks that pretty much, but they like netting per month in the, you know, in six figure range, um, and, and just net after everything. Mm. Um, so I mean, literally a lot of, so lot like of, after a year, you could probably get your million back. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And then a hundred thousand, let's say on the low end, a hundred thousand mm-hmm. a month mm-hmm. yeah. you'd be making from that. Mm-hmm. Yes. With like maintenance, you gotta have like maintenance upkeep mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Maintenance guys, you may if you have a park manager that comes with your cost, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, of course taxes, mm-hmm. right? But a lot of times, if you the the thing what I've learned about in the mobile home park, if you give your uh, if you give the tenants more responsibility, so they're responsible for water, they're responsible. That's how mm-hmm. you cut costs. Really. Also, like the utilities is up to them. Yes. Right. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so you guys are teaching people how to get into the industry as well, right? What? How do you? How are you doing that? So man, we got several products. Uh, we got an ebook. Uh, we have an e-course. Uh, we do group coaching. Um, we do li- a free live webinar every Wednesday, um, just to kind of get people acclimated because that's the biggest thing. Like we look at it like we wish somebody would have showed us this years ago, mm-hmm. um, and then we see the opportunity and it's low competition. Like literally, I don't care if it's ten thousand people that started tomorrow; it's not going to be saturated. All right, so mm-hmm. y'all are selling people the mistakes that y'all made. Exactly. Yeah. So being that y'all in this industry and it was new to y'all, what are some of the, the, the mistakes that you made during your first deal? <laughs> well, I would say one mistake we made being new investors, we was at a park and uh, the park managers, they were actually, they had just brought the park as well. So it was new for them too. And they were showing us a house and, you know, just talking, we actually made the mistake. Well, I'm a, it actually wasn't we, it was uh, Byron. It was me. I'm a, <laughs> no, we got one. Right. Right. Stick right, to it. Right, right, right. Stick, to, Stick it. to it. But no, he, he made the mistake of letting them know how much capital we had, right? So he ended up telling them, like, oh, yeah, we got about 10000 Oh, that's so, on him. That's on him. Right. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> so, of course, you know, they tried to, uh, what we say, finesse us. They tried to finesse us uh, out of a deal and pretty much was showing us a home that we knew was only worth about maybe a couple of thousand but he was trying to sell it to us for about I think four to five and then saying like we would say I have to put another five into it for rehab pretty much taking up all of our capital for our first deal so we quickly learned like yeah you, you got to hush your mouth when you're going out to you know, invest and you know some other mistakes I know you can bring up some um, man not winterizing the house in the winter yeah. cool. like those pipes since they're above ground um, man, that that was, and it's not bad. Like honestly, literally the first time I tried to go a cheap route, so I hired a guy. He told me he could do it for two fifty. <laughs> like two fifty for plumbing? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> right. And he just yeah, that, literally, that yeah, I paid for it, and then I had to pay another five. Little, but again, seven hundred fifty dollars for plumbing, right? Like, what they do that at? <laughs> <laughs> so nine, nine homes. <laughs> what, what, what about um, lack of market research? I saw that that was one of the mistakes that a person could make, right? As far as like not knowing the, the, the market. 
Yes. Well enough. We get so many DMs <laughs> of people that just maybe jump on a webinar or, and I get it because it is exciting, right? Mm-hmm. But you still, it's it's terms and, and it's just, it's not a lot, right? But if you try to jump in there and not really knowing, um, it can cost you more money because most people here, like, man, I can start with 5000 and then they'll take that 5000 and then they, and it's just like, okay, well, what about, we always tell you to budget for lot rent, right? That's part of your expense. Mm-hmm. If we tell you to negotiate lot rent, sometimes park managers may say, hey, you know what? Like, let us rehab this. We'll give you a month or two free. But if you're not, you still got to incorporate that into your cost. It can take you on a long end six months to sell your house, right? Um, so you got to just incorporate just the, the little cost that can add up. On the rental side, when you're getting people to rent, what's, what's the turnover? Are people signing six month lease? Or like you said, some of the truckers do maybe a month lease. What, what's the turnover? So, um, I, honestly, most people we realize that they're willing to, they're willing to stay at five mm-hmm. years max okay. in mobile home parks mm-hmm. because you got to think about it. it's just like I look at it like this it's just like the hood right it's certain parts of the hood that's just a gutter that people know they want to make it out to and then they move to another part of the hood that's a little bit better but they still want to move out so it's, it's levels to it right um, unless you just in a in a in a mobile home park in Miami off the water you probably not you know what I mean like you want to stay there for ten years plus right <laughs> but um, you know so honestly for us we we provide anywhere from two upwards to 10 years um mm-hmm. but normally most of our average is like three to five years but mm-hmm. the turnover we rarely get people that want to leave um mm-hmm. unless they're family like for example we had um a family that a couple they were expecting their third child so mm-hmm. you know they need more space now mm-hmm. so in yeah. that case but normally yeah, they, they're gonna stay so uh, i saw on, on your page also you said that people mistake is buying high and selling low right so <laughs> like all right how do you like well, how does that happen in the, in the, in the mobile home uh, world? Yeah. So I'm going to say this. Profit is profit. And, but we, I'm not going to say we teach you how to be greedy, right? But we teach you how to make large returns. Um, so, yeah, for example, if I buy a house for $10,000 um, and with our system, we, you know, you turn around, you only make two grand off or you make twelve. I'm happy for you that you made money, but it's just like you know you left way more money on the mm-hmm. table. So that's the way we look at it, especially if you look at it long term, right? Like if when, we, when you do sell a finance again, if you take a minimum of three hundred dollars for 60 months, that's 18 grand. So what got you into education? Like what, what made you want to spread awareness and teach people um, how to actually do this? Man, be honest for myself, like that was already my call. And I've been doing a lot of mentoring. Um, I do already doing a lot of coaching. And honestly, God's how I, I never would have saw myself if God would have shown me the picture like, yo, yeah, next year you about to be doing these mobile homes. You be I'm like, bro, you nah, come on, bro, nah, nah, nah. Uh, for, right. right. <laughs> but it's it just he had a bigger, a bigger uh, picture for us, and and I mean both of us, and mm-hmm. uh, man, it was just like dope to even see Sharnice just like, yeah, let's 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 go, right? Yeah, like I told him, like once we did our first couple of deals, I think we said like right here, and I told him like we gotta show this, we gotta teach this to our people because there's so many. I know so many other investors who have been trying to wholesale, who've been trying to get into traditional real estate, but again, there's certain factors that have been stopping them, like credit, capital, they can't get started. So once I found this, I was like, come on, like this is bigger than us, like this for the people. So I, I, there, I noticed you had to have students. So obviously they go through the webinar are you guys coaching them after as well as and bringing them to their first deals yeah so we always say anybody who invests in the program like you family mm-hmm. like hit us up like we don't want to we, we're not that type of like okay buy a program and then go out there on your own and do it mm-hmm. right if you don't hit us up that's on you you know what mm-hmm. i mean but we really it's like an open book because that's the thing is just like the more the more success the more success that they have like that's just, I mean, that's joy for us, but it's just like, what we doing is just, we, we, we help them create wealth for them. Mm-hmm. Right. That's dope. That's dope. So, all right. Well, thank you. We appreciate oh, it. No, this thank is, this y'all. Thank y'all. This has yeah. been extremely educational. So, all right. How, what's the information for your courses? How can people contact you? How can they check out um, all of your programs that you have going? Yeah. So, um, for one, man, Instagram is really our main page. Uh, follow us at at in, I'm sorry, at Mobile Home Elite Investors. Um, there, you can literally click the link in the bio. That can get you can get access to the course. Uh, we have a private Facebook group, um, an ebook. Um, you even need a payment plan. That's what we have. Private coaching, whatever you really need. That's what we you know we get our program to help everybody. We got something for everybody. Dope, dope, dope. Um, Troy. Yeah, shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. That's our proud to proud to pay program. 
Um, mm-hmm. Everybody that's been supporting on there, there's five tiers. You can join any tier that you like. There's bonus footage there. There's bonus content. Uh, I just want to give a good shout out, quick shout out to our new members, Jada and Marquise, mm-hmm. and uh, Christian and um, uh, Derek as well. Um, they, they've joined, and they're, some of them have joined the tier fives and joined the tier two. Anything that you, you provide is a blessing to us because it allows us to come here, come to Chicago, go to mm-hmm. other cities. Mm-hmm. And show highlight some hometown heroes, and yeah. so this is this is great. And we learn every time that we do an episode, we learn mm-hmm. something new. So thank you to everybody on Patreon. Thank you to everybody on EarnYourLeisure.com that's purchased the merch. I think it's the first episode that everybody had the merch on. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So yeah. shout out to everybody that's been purchasing the merch. Um, we got our tour shirts up there as well. So feel free to get that. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, assets over liabilities. That's what we're running with. So <laughs> shout out to Chicago, the good city of Chicago. Has been very f- hospitable to us. And um, this is actually the first one of our hometown heroes. We're actually going to be releasing another episode with the Downing Brothers. They are Chicago celebrities. Um, they, they got an HGTV show, and they're, they're interesting because they're actually firefighters, but they're also real estate investors as well. And they're also television stars as well. So they have an interesting story. And as Troy said, the merch. Um, but don't forget our workshop series as well. Our workshop is 1017, and that's going to be financing, financing for first-time real estate investors, how to finance your first real estate deal. That's going to be in person in Brooklyn, but it's also going to be live stream for anybody. You can go to the events tab on our website website on yourleisure.com to check that out um and also as you guys know i'm a financial advisor so if you want to hit me up for a 30 minute consultation anything from retirement planning estate planning life insurance investing anything like that uh, my calendar is also on earnyourleisure.com and as i said that is a 30 it's not to pick my brain please please do not (laughs) just call me for unrelated random questions I'm being very generous with my time here. So it's specifically targeted for people that are interested in getting help in, in those areas. Um, but yes, that is on earnyourleisure.com. And the book tip of the week is a step-by-step guide to buy and sell mobile homes. You know who wrote that book? Who that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our guy Byron wrote that book. It's actually his, his last name is Sellers, which is actually very interesting. Very fitting. When he told me, I'm like... Is that like a stage name? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like selling homes and his last name is Sellers. So he's God plan. It's God plan. Yeah, sure. So, so yes, yeah, check that. And that's the ebook, right? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So make sure you check them out. This is a very, very good episode for us and mm-hmm. blessings to you. Um, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's extremely yeah. encouraging to see any young entrepreneurs, but especially a couple mm-hmm. um, that, you know, had start. It's not always all good times either, right? Mm-hmm. Like you start, you know, and, and it's, it's issue. Right? It's, it's issues when you first start, but to see you guys, you know, progressing, and, and I'm interested to see next year, five years, ten years. So I'll be following your journey. I'll be rooting for you guys for sure, oh, man. for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Man, thanks, thanks for welcome us to your home. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Right. People look at the back and they're like, "Yo, I like the new setup." Right. Like, oh, we're kind of on the road, guys. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. So yes, we will see you guys, and um, peace, peace.